Telcos have been striving for years to make better use of the massive volumes of data they have at their fingertips in order to increase operational efficiency, improve the customer experience and identify new business opportunities. In the cloud-oriented 5G era, such efforts have never been more important, while the potential to extract more value from raw data has never been greater as AI capabilities play an ever greater role. Well, to find out about how telcos should be thinking about this and the role that the Network Data Analytics Function, or NWDAF, can play, I'm talking today with Alex Shevchenko, CEO at Guavas. Alex, great to talk to you today. Thanks very much for joining us. So why do network operators need to deploy an NWDAF solution and when, at what stage of their 5G evolution, should they be deploying it? Hello. Well, um, 5G is not just yet another 4G, 3G and so on. It's not just a faster 4G. What we see is that uh, previously, when we were moving from one generation of a network to another one, the complexity, of course, was growing, but more or less linear. We believe that today is growing exponentially when moving from previous uh, generations of a network to 5G. So that brings the old ways of managing the uh, operating the network uh, to a point where they may not be sufficient. Uh, previously, uh, the operation would be uh, done through using the static pre-deterministic rules, uh, lots of uh, human involvement, the human operators and so on. You can probably get away with that when building a 5G network at a very early stage when it's not too loaded yet. But once the complexity grows, there would be definitely a point where it's not possible. So it's all about the automation. And, you know, and WDAF is the standard meant to be there to um, allow uh, this automation happen in a proper and standardized way. So I would say, since we've been in this uh, big data analytics for telco networks business over 16 years now, uh, Guavos is a company, uh, we've been talking you know, early enough to all what we call the uh, 5G early adopters among the uh, telco operators. Uh, and uh, we see that today they realize that the complexity of 5G network requires them to implement an WDAF solution. They know why it's no longer nice to have, it's must have. I think it's more just about the question of how early you should start developing. Well, our advice would be that once again, you probably can get away with the complexity at the very early stage of implementing your network. But if you wanna be, if you wanna have a smooth scaling of it, uh, scaling up, you better plan it at the early stage of design of your network architecture. Besides, we may be talking about it later, but we see from some studies and uh, projects we've been involved into that, in fact, in WDAF can bring some uh, cost efficiency and user experience improvement, service experience improvement from the very early stages of 5G implementation. So uh, Guavas has already announced its NWDAF. How does this differ from other solutions that are also based on the same standards and specifications? Well, I would say not just announced. Uh, the product is there. We've introduced it to the market. I think we were the first vendor to actually introduce it uh, last year. And we've been following the, uh, the standard, but we actually uh, were also working on some use cases beyond that. I mean, one, once again, uh, Guavas was founded in 2006 and it was always in the crossroads of uh, telecom network expertise, data science and computer science. We were always in this field and we've been working with some of the largest uh, communication service providers in the world for a long time. So, you know, we, we got involved uh, developing solutions like this before 5G or NWDAF happened. So we were definitely ready. We started to play this card early. Um, well, we are a pure play uh, analytics company. We pay a lot of attention. We uh, invest a lot in our uh, AI and machine learning capabilities, uh, the, the engine uh, inside our solution. Uh, we had a chance to be involved in some very early stages of uh, various projects and studies on uh, uh, 5G analytics and, and WDAF. Uh, Guava solution is, uh, that's for me a very important differentiator. It's uh, edge two core to cloud. Some uh, vendors would rather focus on only part of this, um, of the network. And, um, 
once again, uh, being compliant with the standard is one thing, but what's, what's the real added value bef behind the implementation is probably way more important, right? Not only you want your MWDF solution uh, to help you uh, meet the compliance with the standard, but you actually want it to help you with your automation and therefore cost reduction, uh, service experience improvement, and so on. And um, besides, we don't, I mean, our portfolio is uh, called 5G IQ, uh, the one which is uh, addressing the 5G market, 5G analytics, and it goes beyond um, uh, NWDF standard. We, 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 we are totally compliant with the standard, but we also bring some extra use cases, extra opportunities, thinking not only about the cost efficiency and operation improvement, but also about opening some new revenue streams for mobile operators. Okay, excellent. Um, now, what would you say are the biggest technical business and end user customer benefits that operators can gain from deploying an NWDAF? I'll try to bring some practical touch when answering this question, because, um, I mean, there's plenty of things I can say theoretically about it, but we, we've been thrilled with the level of interest and enthusiasm in our solution uh, from mobile operators globally around the world. And we have a number of them, uh, again, some early adopters uh, that uh, work on their 5G standalone implementations as we speak, uh, planning to use our 5G IQ solutions to help them, uh, uh, help them automate their networks, help them improve the resource allocation and management, uh, service experience, uh, provision the scaling uh, capabilities. So just maybe to go to some example, uh, we've been working uh, recently with a leading uh, US uh, mobile operator on a project to evaluate the benefits of an WDAF to meet some of their particular needs in building their network. And the study is showing significant improvement of analytics machine learning based approach over the static predeterministic rules in the form of overall service experience score so we we've run thousands of simulations together of various situations and network conditions and we observed uh over 26 percent improvement of uh, quality of experience and uh the measured service experience was constantly better than static rules approach due to a low variation in the service experience score analytics based uh, approach has over 15% improvement in our case in cost efficiency, providing better utilization of costly deployed resources, whether at the edge, uh, regional core or centralized core. Uh, even in the lightly loaded network, that's by the way, very important, right? Because that's proving that NWDAF would be, would be beneficial even at the early stages of uh, deploying a 5G network. That's what I uh, addressed in answering one of the uh, previous questions. Um, and then if we follow this line, right, if we see this improvement in service experience and uh, cost efficiency uh, at the lightly loaded 5G network, then we only expect this gap uh, in uh, service experience and cost efficiency to grow as the complexity of the network grow, grows comparing to uh, the old uh, legacy ways of um, managing the network. And not only that, but in fact, we will arrive at some point when we run out of um, capacity of old ways and static predeterministic rules to manage the network. So at some point, it's no longer a comparison of percentage of improvement. It's practically the impossible versus possible. So uh, for operators, what does the NWDAF deployment journey look like? Uh, how should they think about the transition from legacy analytics and IT platforms to next-gen cloud-oriented architectures? And, and how will the NWDAF fit into a multi-vendor ecosystem? Well, thanks for using the word ecosystem. Uh, I think personally that 5G is all about ecosystem. and. Indeed, it's, it's very different from previous generations of the network. Uh, we speak of so active use of cloud and partial or full uh, virtualization. Well, that's why WDAF, it not only fits into the multi-vendor ecosystems, it's there to facilitate the creation of a multi-vendor ecosystem. 
maybe just to give an example, because once again, Guavos has been playing this game for 16 years. We were trying to uh, implement ways of uh, automating uh, your network before 5G started. One of the main problems we had to deal with in the past was the proprietary sources and formats of data. Every vendor would come up with their own, which would also lead to a low quality of data in terms of being able to use it for um, uh, AI, machine learning uh, analysis, and therefore for generating some valuable and actionable insights. So in WDAF, one of its main uh, purposes is actually to eliminate this issue, is to have data formats and uh, uh, APIs in the system standardized as much as possible. And uh, that's why also it's very important for the ecosystem uh, sake that uh, vendors are working together and pulling in the same direction. And that's why us, we actually got actively involved not only in working with uh, communication service providers on 5G analytics, but also reaching out and partnering with uh, uh, network equipment providers, cloud vendors, uh, telco software uh, vendors. And we see that most of them, practically nearly all of them, do understand that it's everybody's game, that it's all about ecosystem. Now, maybe just to quickly address the way I see the roadmap, the, the, the way forward in terms of different stages of implementation of NWDAF. Once again, we in Guavos believe that NWDAF has to be part of the design of the network architecture from the very beginning to facilitate the scaling up later on and also to have some early benefits uh, we, we mentioned earlier. Um, we see what is happening now is that, again, the group of early adopters uh, of 5G are uh, running the studies and RFIs on NWDAF uh, then the next steps, which are which are coming in place now for some of the players, is to do the trials, the lab trials, the first uh, early projects, maybe on some limited scope, addressing and prioritizing some first use cases uh, of NWDAF as standard. Then we see it going into commercial deployments. And then the next two important steps would be, of course, to follow the evolution of the standard. Today we have release 16, there would be new releases coming by 3GPP, but also to look what's beyond that, right? What other use cases can uh, 5G analytics uh, systems deployed by mobile operators bring to them? Again, thinking of how it can also help them to generate some new uh, revenue streams, maybe help them to create better stickiness and loyalty from their both consumer and enterprise customers. That's how, for me, it's going to go forward. So uh, to conclude, why is Guavas being invited to engage with the major operators in these NWDAF discussions? And what are the next steps for you in this area and in 5G AI and analytics overall? Well, I don't want to be too shy answering this question, to be honest, because we may not be the largest player on the market, but we've been there early enough. And in that particular niche, which is now expanding. <laughs> uh, we've been one of the pioneers. From the beginning, we've been investing into uh, uh, top-notch uh, big data analytics, real-time analytics, particularly for the telco networks. And now we can say, we, you know, it's been recognized by, uh, by the players. That's why I believe we are invited by uh, so many mobile operators uh, to participate in the studies and the trials. That's why we are also uh, quite welcome and we get great traction when we work on organizing, you know, uh, along with other players, organizing the ecosystem and trying to uh, go into as many partnerships as we can. And uh, once again, we, we are pure play analytics company. We are working on open and WDAF. We are vendor agnostic in terms of network equipment. We, we work on edge, cloud, core, parts of the network. Uh, our solution, uh, our products are all modular and built on the same uh, edge streaming uh, platform, which has its own recognition on the market. Uh, we've been following NWDAF standards from the beginning. We invested in developing NWDAF standards very early enough. We believe we are the first, we were the first company to 
introducing WDF solution in the market. Now we've been uh, we've learned pretty well on how to convert the feedback we receive from the uh, communication service providers we've been working with back into our R and D, back into our uh, research and development. Uh, we probably all understand. We spoke about that earlier. That it's really important what's inside this in WDF solution. What's what's going there beyond the what what standard mandates? Uh, how well it actually generates some actionable insights? How smart the AI ML uh, engine is uh, behind all this? And uh, that's what uh, you know. I can say that the feedback we were receiving from working with some of the uh, largest players on the market so far was that we are really advanced on with our solution and once again we don't want to narrow ourselves down to just the standard standard is big and it will be uh, growing bigger there will be plenty of use cases but there are plenty of use cases beyond that some some of the use cases we were implementing before for pre previous uh, generations of uh, mobile networks have actually revived big time with um, with uh, 5G coming in. Besides, we also believe that with 5G, again, it's a game changer for mobile operators. It's their perfect chance to go beyond, uh, you know, just selling data and voice uh, to their uh, consumer and maybe even more importantly, enterprise customers. It's going to expand and bring the uh, proper digitalization level to and digital transformation to the to various industries be behind and beyond uh, telecommunications and as we are part of Thales group which is uh, which has a presence in so many verticals and industries we have a chance to see how our services and analytics insights can help mobile operators to uh, offer some new totally new services to their enterprise customers as well I may want to mention maybe one use case we are working on actively to go a little bit beyond the standard, maybe included in the standard NWDEF or MDEF in the future, uh, management data analytics functions, which is a solution that helps to automate and dynamize the uh, network slicing uh, allocation assurance. Uh, so it's a network slicing assurance analytics, which may uh, bring um, some some new, totally new ways of uh, dealing with uh, network slices and offering this as a service to the customers of mobile operators. So we actually have plenty of ideas. We have the roadmap. We'll be definitely following the NWDAF and MDAF standard, but we'll creatively go beyond those standards as well. Well, it's good to hear that all those years of uh, efforts and R&D and investments are paying off. And there's never any need to be shy here on Telecom TV, Alex. So listen, thanks for joining us today and giving us an update on what Guavas is up to and how important the NWDAF is. Great to have you on the programme and look forward to speaking to you again in the future. Thanks very much, Alex. Thank you very much. Thank you.